Chef Yi Vang on why he won't change his father's hmong. Or no, sorry, I think it's hmong. I think the H is silent. Sausage recipe, no matter who asks, including vegans, which is why I'm talking about this. So this, I think he posted it originally to Facebook, and then it was a little op-ed uh, put in the Star Tribune back in April of last year, so a little over a year ago. I'm just learning about this now because I guess he posted a little update. But this is the original, and uh, I've read through it, and I want to talk about it. Earlier this month, I asked if we can make our Hmong sausage into a vegan sausage. This question was innocent enough, and I believe there was no ill will or malicious intent with this question. Yeah, I mean, I hope you would believe that. Why would you believe there was ill will or malicious intent when someone asks you if you can make a sausage vegan? That's just, I don't know why you would need to clarify that. Actually, I do, which will kind of be the, the whole point of, of this, at least what I gather from this article, which is that he doesn't know anything about veganism and really isn't curious about veganism at all and why someone would ask hey, could you make this vegan or could you have a vegan version? But it did get me thinking. A lot of times we as Hmong people are asked by mostly white diners, can you make it less spicy or can you take this or that out of this dish? We've also been bombarded with comments on reviews saying this place doesn't have enough vegan or vegetarian options. We won't come back. I made a comment in a recent video about white people spicy, which uh, I think some people didn't understand, which to me is just spicy for white people typically is not very spicy. White people, at least in the U.S., we don't eat a whole lot of spicy stuff, uh, particularly growing up. And so often when something is labeled as spicy here, it's really not at all. At least people from other cultures would taste it and go, that's like barely spicy, what? So I'm not surprised that white people are asking him, can you make this less spicy? Because we're just not used to eating super spicy food. Now I say that, but my dad and my mom used to eat super, super spicy food. They are very white, for those who can't tell or couldn't have guessed. Uh, they used to have, I remember, a big bowl of, like, various hot peppers on the counter <laughs> that, like, we weren't supposed to touch, like, at all times. They really, really loved spicy stuff. I think it's interesting that he's putting these things together as if they are the same thing. Someone asking like, hey, can you make something less spicy or can you just take this or that out? I don't like it. Versus someone saying, hey, there's not enough vegan and vegetarian options here. I'm not going to eat here. You know, maybe the people who want vegan and vegetarian, maybe they just don't like meat or, or whatever. Or maybe there's another reason you know, maybe there's another reason they're asking that and it has nothing to do with just personal preference. And even if it does have to do with personal preference, is that really such a big deal? As we go through this article, you'll see that he, he takes it really personally. I think he takes it as a, a kind of slight against him or against his culture when really it's just someone saying, hey, I'm paying you money for a thing. Can you make it the way I want it? That, that's really it. There's the concept in the service industry that the customer is always right. I don't believe that the customer is always right. As a customer of a dining establishment, especially establishments that are run by BIPOC owners, ask yourself why these dishes are made in the way that it is made before you ask them to change it. Dig into the story behind the dish. So perfect example. This is coming from someone who clearly views food as very, very important as some chefs, people in the food industry do versus your typical customer who just wants to eat something tasty and reasonably priced. You know, typically we just don't really care about the story behind the dish. We just want to eat some food and then go back to work or whatever it is that we have to do. It's just not that important where the food came from or how meaningful it is to you, particularly for something spicy. Someone's trying to support your establishment and they're asking if something can be made less spicy because they don't like spicy foods. Maybe the spicy foods really hurt. You know, spicy foods can kind of hurt. They hurt your mouth. They make you sweat. I mean, you're really telling them, no, you should just have to deal with it because that's my culture. I mean, he can totally do that. It's his, re it's his restaurant, you know, it's his right to do that. I don't think that puts you on the right side of this, you know, you kind of sound not very nice. Now, certainly there can be unreasonable questions or expectations, you know, someone's asking for a sausage or something to be made less spicy, but they're already made, right? And that's just how they're made, you know, what are you gonna do? Or someone goes to a donut shop and is like, hey, you should make your donuts sugar-free. Like, what? But I think making something less spicy is like a pretty typical 
request. This is a mixed message to us BIPOC people because what has been said publicly is be who you are, don't change for anyone, which is great. But when you ask us to make changes on these dishes that have deep, deep meaning to us, what you're really saying is, please, can you change who you are to be authentic enough for my pleasure and taste palette because I'm uncomfortable meeting you where you are when it comes to your food. That is such an intense way to view such a simple <laughs> request and a simple interaction. Obviously, food means a lot more to him than it does to me. And there's some reason for that. I think he gets into this one or the, the subsequent article about his upbringing in America and wanting to be named like William and wanting to be more traditionally American and being like embarrassed by the food that his mother would pack for him. So it's not super surprising that growing up he has, I think he even says it's kind of a redemption. He's trying to respect the, the food and the culture that his parents brought to America and trying to appreciate um, who he is and how he grew up. But maybe it would help him in his, I don't know, relations with others and interpretations of others' questions if he realized that that's his own thing, that a lot of us don't have that. When we're asking for a, a simple dietary change, a simple change of a dish, it's not because they're uncomfortable meeting him where he is when it comes to food. No, it's because we don't like spicy food <laughs> or we're allergic to something. I mean... Lord. And also, you know, you ask us to make changes on these dishes that have deep, deep meaning to us. So we're just supposed to assume if someone is a minority and serving food that the food has deep, deep meaning to them. I don't think that's always true. I think it's a pretty ridiculous assumption to believe that every time you go into a Chinese restaurant or whatever, that they're just going to be highly offended if you ask for some minor change. This sausage is special to me and it's deeper than any food trend or marketing ploy. There's a reason for the coarse grind. There's a reason for the amount of pork belly to pork shoulder. And there's a reason to the aromatics that we put in it. These reasons are what gives this dish so much soul. So before you ask someone to change something for your comfort or palate, ask yourself, what is the story of this dish? Because we believe every dish has a story. And if you follow it long enough and close enough, you'll get to the people behind the dish. So this is what I'm talking about. Changes to him are because of your personal comfort or just your taste preference, which is really interesting given the follow-up where he talks about being open-minded. We've all lost so much of our respective cultures by catering to the white palate because we have to make a living. But if I go into a BIPOC restaurant, I don't want them to change anything and I'm not going to present them with a long list of dietary preferences. I try to stay quiet and listen to the cooks, listen to the other people eating there, and I don't try to compare it to something else. I can't tell you how many times people hear that we lived in Laos and then they say, great, I love Pad Thai. Pad Thai is great, but it has nothing to do with me. And when you tell me that, it means that before you've even eaten this food, you've made a judgment. People say they're open-minded, but sometimes their hearts are closed. Food is a universal language, but are you really, truly listening? I would ask, is he really, truly listening when it comes to vegans and why exactly we're asking for a sausage to be made vegan? It's not just because of taste preference. It's not just because of comfort. It's because we want to be able to support a particular establishment. We want to be able to support this man and his culture and taste his food, but we're not going to do that at the expense of animals. We're not going to do that if it involves animal exploitation. It really has nothing to do with him and his culture. Harm Trump's culture. <laughs> it just does. Sorry. Just because this sausage has been made for however many years, just because his father, that's the way they bonded, it doesn't mean that there isn't inherent immorality involved in making that sausage the way it's traditionally made by killing pigs. So it's just weird to hear someone talk about people not being open-minded when he clearly has no interest, no curiosity <laughs> when it comes to veganism and the reasons why someone would ask if they could provide vegan vegetarian options. And also being offended that someone said, great, I love pad thai. Why would you choose to view it that way? I just don't understand. Maybe the person is just a typical dumb American when it comes to other countries and when it comes to geography and food. And we just don't know. Maybe the person just thought that pad thai wasn't from Thailand, that it was from Laos, or maybe they think Laos is in Thailand. I mean, they are right next to each other, I think. <laughs> you don't have to view it as this, uh, as this 
close-minded, intentionally hurtful thing. It means that before you've even eaten this food, you've made a judgment. They're just trying to compare it to things they know, or they just, again, think that that's where Pad Thai comes from. I just think that's so bad for him and for people who you know, I don't want to say are like constantly offended. I don't want to sound like a conservative. This to me sounds like someone who is constantly offended. And I can understand where that's coming from. Again, having grown up feeling like he didn't belong, being embarrassed by stuff, and then growing up and being embarrassed that he was embarrassed and now really feeling this need to um, kind of redeem his culture and his family. I can understand why he takes stuff like that personally, but I think it would really help him personally if he stopped doing that and tried to see from other people's perspectives, which is just that we just want to eat yummy food, man. And sometimes we have food preferences and it's really nothing against you. It, it really has very little to do with you. Most of us don't go to eat as this like spiritual learning thing. We're just trying to get some food, man. We just want to eat some food and try new foods. And then there's this. I mean, this is kind of offensive to me. I don't know. I understand that people want what they want and that they're often unaware of the incredible privilege we have around food in this country. I've had enough of the narrative that runs like, we support you in your brown skin, but now can I get a vegan version of that? Hold the hot sauce. I'm not racist, but right? I mean, to me, that comes across as we're insincere, like we don't really support you because we want to get a vegan version or something less spicy. Again, why would you assume that? If people are coming to your establishment, that means they, they want to support you. They want to give you money so you can continue to exist and have that, that business and make money doing what you love. And again, with veganism, like your, your culture doesn't trump animal cruelty. It just doesn't. So if you want us to support your food, you're going to have to provide vegetarian or vegan options. We're not going to forego our morals in order to feel like what true allies or something. And it's also very weird considering all the minorities who don't consume animal flesh and animal byproducts and even have restaurants that are fully vegan. We have a fully vegan restaurant here that's been around for a long time, well before we moved here. It's run by all Asian people and it's fully vegan. Lots of mock meats and stuff, lots of more traditional foods like mal mal pot mal pot tofu. <laughs> tofu with the with the Szechuan, you know, sauce. Are they like not respecting their culture or something by serving vegan food? Are they losing so much of their respective culture by catering to the white palate? I just think there needs to be some amount of balance, you know, irrespective of veganism, but just just purely talking about food. You can view foods, obviously, as more than just food. I mean, a lot of us have uh, really beautiful memories surrounding food, spending time with our family, right? It's usually that sort of thing. Um, or just having really, really good food that makes you happy. It's, it's nice. It is more than just eating. It is more than just fuel for most of us. And I think we can still have that without making it just this thing that's up on a pedestal. And if anyone questions it or has a different taste preference, they're what inherently like being offensive or, or closed minded. He says he never asks for any changes if, when he goes into restaurants. I have no doubt in my mind that there are, are at least some cuisines around this country that he would not be comfortable eating. I mean, there's some there's some weird, nasty shit, <laughs> bug stuff and just like really, really fermented stuff that if you're not used to eating, it's not good. And even stuff that a lot of people within those cultures don't eat or don't like, or they only eat it on like a, a special day of the year because of its cultural significance, but really most people don't like it. So to fault people for not liking spicy foods and to turn it into this almost, um, like a moral failing or an inability to see things from the other side or to care about someone's culture is kind of shitty to me. And then when it comes to veganism, I mean, it's no question that his food would be better if he didn't buy dead animals to make it. And remember, culture changes and things that we think are super traditional actually aren't that old. I was just learning about the uh, banh mi sandwich, the Vietnamese banh mi sandwich. And my partner was like, that's so weird that there's like 
bread, that this is a traditional sandwich and there's there's bread? Like, when did they even get bread? And so I looked it up and learned that, oh, yeah, wow, this is actually a really uh, recent thing. I think it, it really, in terms of the, the sandwich itself and popularity, really only goes back to like the 1950s. And then here in the U.S., back in the, the 80s, Vietnamese people living in America uh, helped popularize it. I think there was a, a restaurant that started in California. Um, so it's really actually a pretty new thing. But I think a lot of Americans, it's like, oh, yeah, Vietnamese bon me, that traditional <laughs> Vietnamese sandwich. I mean, if we start eating more and more vegan food, the cultures could change to the point where it's culturally uh, traditional to have vegan food, to have mock meats instead of actual meat, which would be good, but it wouldn't be good because uh, it's the culture, right? It wouldn't be good because that's what the majority of people do. It would be good because we're no longer exploiting animals. Culture just tells us nothing about the morality of a given practice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't come down too hard on um, on Yia. I'm sure I'm saying that totally wrong. As aggravating as that kind of position is, I really do feel um, sad. I really do feel sad for people like that who just choose to see a kind of malice in like everything <laughs> in people's simple questions and simple reactions to food turning things into a slight on their culture or on their race it's just very sad because it's just hurting you it's just going to make you sad and or angry i mean there have been so many times in my life everyone's had experiences where someone says something that could be interpreted in a really um, kind of hateful way, or it could be interpreted in a different way, or you could just see it as, oh, well, they're very ignorant and move on with your life. A perfect example for me, someone's grandmother, someone who was in the same class as me, found out that my mom, that, you know, our, our family, I guess, didn't believe in God, was atheist, and they were very, very uh, Christian. They even did like the talking in tongues thing. So very specific uh, sect of Christianity. But her response apparently was, oh, she seemed so nice <laughs> talking about my, my mom. My mom was involved in a lot of school stuff and PTO stuff. And she was like really disappointed and like, oh, she seems so nice. You could respond with, well, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> or you just react like my mom and I did, which is just to laugh because we know that this is someone who's older. I mean, again, this would have been back in the late 90s, probably didn't even know what atheist was, probably thought that it was worshiping the devil, which a lot of people used to think that's what if you don't believe in God, well, you they can't possibly fathom that there's just nothing you have to believe in or worship something. So Satan, so we could have been mad, we could have been offended. But instead, we just laughed it off and went, yeah, that's old, ignorant lady, what are you gonna do? Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, that's cool. If you want to support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Thank you so much to all my patrons over there who do support the channel. I do upload two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. Just talking about random stuff, sometimes more thoughts on videos I've done, mostly right now just pregnancy stuff. 99% of it is pregnancy related stuff and you know, what's going on, what I'm going through. Not having gestational diabetes. That was a good one. <laughs> Thanks again. New video soon. All I wanted was Lunchables. Oh God. Do y'all remember Lunchables? Are they still around? I liked the crackers. And I think sometimes there was a little snack that was like, okay. But the like little pieces of meat, whatever kind of meat that was, ew. And then wasn't there the dinner, the like dinner meals with the penguin on it? And it would have like corn and again, some sort of meat thing and some sort of like bread thing and then some sort of dessert. And often it was like a pudding or something gross that I hated. <laughs> I definitely remember having those every once in a while. My brother really liked them. He was really into them. But uh, no, just give me a bowl of cereal, man. I'm good.